What does it mean to save a life? What comes to mind for you? And can we expand that to include bees? I work in Vancouver, British Columbia, on the unceded lands of the Musqueam, Squamish, and Tsleil-Waututh First Nations. The bees and the people I work alongside are in a community called the Downtown East Side. The Squamish call this place Kem Kem LA, the place where many maples grow. And that name speaks of an honoring and an understanding of the interconnection of our human cultures with that of the land that we live on. These are honeybees festooning. They're hanging together, linked in chains, creating the wax that they will sculpt into their hexagonal combs in sacred geometry. They're harnessing the energy from the sun through the plants into their honey. And they can do this because they're highly adaptable, communicative, and social. And they can be a mirror for us to understand how we might communicate better, how we might work together, support each other for the greater good of the whole community, people, plants, pollinators, and planet included. I work at a nonprofit society called Hives for Humanity. We work to create meaningful opportunities for connection to nature, to community, and to selves, and we do that through the culture of the hive, through the bees. This is a clover hedgeway in Delta, BC. Hawks fly overhead here, bees buzz in the clover, and it's a short walk to the ocean for a swim after a long day of beekeeping on a summer day. Time slows down here. Do you have a place like this too, and can you go there now? We work to bring the respite of nature right into the heart of the city so that you might hear the bees buzzing, hear the bird song, take a seat under some shade under a tree, watch the water collect in leaves right in the midst of the high rises, the concrete, the sirens, and the bustle. This is one of these urban pollinator meadows, one of these urban gardens, the St. John's wort, the feverfew, and the peppermint. This garden is on a block in the downtown east side that is most known for its extreme visible poverty, for the concurrent crises of homelessness and of drug policy that are causing the pain, the suffering, and the loss and deaths of our loved ones. This garden is a space where people and pollinators can flourish together. And we build it moment by moment, one ripple at a time. In the foreground here, can you see the honeybee, her head down in the St. John's wort? And in the upper corner, against the man standing with the red shirt, can you see the tiny wild bee cruising in to forage as well? And when you look at those people in the background, do you feel the calm? Can you see the conversation and the community, the connection that they're in? It is this connection that is central to our humanity. We are not separate. We are not alone. We are an interconnected community. And yet, disconnection and isolation pervade our Western culture, and they're most visible in our most vulnerable communities. We must dismantle the systems that exclude some people, that value some ways of knowing and being over others, and in their stead, build communities that honor and value that diversity and inclusion is our strength. How do we build these communities? How do we foster these spaces that welcome all people in, that build connection, that build self-worth, that support people in building their own belonging? How might we use the privilege and the power that we hold to support and empower people who do not experience the same privilege and power? One way that I have found is the bees. The space that is just right for bees to work alongside each other, to share warmth, to share understanding and resources is called bee space. It's the space where two bees can fit. What if we were more like a colony of bees, where every member is valued, where everyone has a role, and everyone is supported in contributing? What could we build if we all linked, festooned in chains, creating life and balance together? Here are Jim and Ian two of our community beekeepers, both residents of the downtown east side of Vancouver, working alongside each other in the location where we put our first therapeutic hive in the downtown east side. For all of their differences as individuals, these two people have shared strikingly similar stories with me over the years I've known them. Pain and trauma, injury from beyond their control, resulting in a reduced capacity to work, 
resulting in diminished self-worth and depression. The opportunity to come into these spaces, to connect with these gardens and bees, was, in Ian's words, finding hope where there was none before. And for Jim, it was a reason to lift up his head. This is how bees save lives. As we enter our garden apiary, as we light the smoker, as we pass the vibrating frames to each other, our connection is tangible. The bees are a point of intersection between the land, the sky, the water, and the people. We smell and taste joy. Our thoughts are in the moment, in a therapeutic meditation that connects us to our own agency, our own self of worth, and our own potential. This is Christine. She was super nervous for a dinner. She was having a friend over, and she wanted to share her life in dignity. So she came to this garden where she volunteered with us, and she asked if she could have some flowers. So we helped her pick these out, make this bouquet, so that she could take it home and share with her friend. Do you feel this moment? Can you smell those lilies? These flowers are grown with love and intent. They provide forage and habitat for wild and managed species of bees and other pollinators, and they create joy and pride for people. This is the beauty of reciprocity, that when we give, we receive. When we put our time and thought and love into others, joy can be grown and shared. From seed to flower, from fruit to, fruit to food, in sustenance and in celebration, ripples grow and build to waves and they can start with something as simple as a bouquet. Here are Poco and Doc, both of whom have credited the garden with saving their lives. Doc is no longer with us. He passed a couple of years ago, and he is remembered with much love in our gardens for his smile. Poco is still in the community and is a valued member, sharing her love and tenacity with her neighbors. In Doc's words, the garden stopped him from being in and out of jail all day. It gave him somewhere to work and connect. And for Poco, in her words, the garden taught her that she deserved love. I'm honored to have worked with both of them in this life through the bees. And again, both shared very similar stories with me. Violent disconnection from families, poverty, illness, barriers to health care, isolation, loss of trust. They found this urban farm, and it gave them a reason to get up, a reason to connect and to live, and an opportunity to contribute and to share. Every moment in the garden is a ripple of self-worth, of a sense of belonging, and of empowered agency. Whether planting the seed, watering the plant, tending the bees, or sharing the harvest, it is connection that is the opposite of isolation and that is foundational to our health. It is in isolation that we lose. It is sleeping alone in alleys, overdosing alone in hidden rooms, feeling invisible and feeling devalued that people die. When we create opportunities for people to come into connection and into community and to build their own belonging, that is when lives are saved. And these are valuable lives. Here I am working alongside another one of our beekeepers, another Ian. This individual used to avoid our programming, but he sought out the bees. I would be teaching a workshop, and I would turn around, and there he would be, inside the apiary, sitting down in front of the hive, breathing with the bees in his own meditation. Over the years, he started to connect to our programming, to our staff, and to our volunteers. And now, four years later, I see him almost every day, asking questions, sharing ideas, and building his own sense of self-worth through connection with these incredible insects. What are the two of us feeling, hearing, thinking, smelling, when we work together here, watching the bees? We focus in and we breathe alongside them, we delve into the moment, and we let go of our burdens. Our participants report transformative experiences in the apiaries. Chronic pain dissipating, stress evaporating, and joy returning. And even if those are just moments, even if all of those burdens wait right outside of the apiary to be picked back up again, they're moments that we can carry forward, and they all count. Each of us bring unique gifts to the communities we are a part of. And the skill is to learn to recognize them and to support others in sharing theirs. There are 20,000 species of bees in the world. 
The honeybees that we keep in our apiaries are one species. Each of the bumblebees on these cosmos flowers are also unique species. And each species has evolved special relationships with the plants and the environments that they grew up around. When we slow down, we begin to see the details, the rusty bottom, the yellow band, the individual. And when we meet people where they are at, valuing their unique details, their experiences and perspectives, our ideas and assumptions are transformed. Our lived experiences challenge our learned biases. Our work then is to acknowledge and question the underlying judgments, to release them and to honor each other. And instead of pushing people out, moving them along, excluding or punishing them, using prohibition or enforcement, to call them in, to listen to them, to include them, because we all grow stronger by including diversity. This is how we might begin to dismantle the systems that are placing such incredible stresses on our human and environmental communities, causing species of bees to disappear, causing habitat loss for all kinds of animals and injustice for all kinds of people. We each create ripples for the bees, for ourselves, and for our communities when we plant seeds, when we feed the bees, and when we include others. We must remember to pause and celebrate, to remember and reflect upon the small ripples we do create, the brief moments. When everything feels dark, constricting, and unjust, these moments offer meaning. The joy, the hope, and the momentum that exists in our relationships and communities is real. It comes from the ground up. It comes from each of us. This is Wilma and Ali sitting in a slice of shade under a banner of stars after one of our celebrations. These two women have experienced what we might call unspeakable loss the loss of children, the loss of land and language, the loss of culture. But to say loss is too passive, these things have been taken and violently. How might we begin to give them back? The situation is complex, the trauma is cumulative, and we can all do work to face the truth of it. The legacy of colonization is one of multiple concurrent and ongoing crises of violence and displacement of genocide. With ever-widening gaps of social and economic inequity, what will social and environmental justice look like? It will need to start with acknowledging our interconnection, with pausing, valuing, and including one another. The bees give us these moments to pause and reflect. They open our senses to the world around us. Through these moments, we build empathy and understanding, and we work together to reflect the culture of the hive in our own communities. Here I am in the downtown of Vancouver. The wolf and eagle painted on these boxes by one of our community members, a Diné artist, John W. Sam. The pollinator behind meadow behind us, where our gardeners work together to save the bees. And around us, a city full of spaces where moments like this might be possible. When we work together to save the bees, the bees save us right back in return. They connect us to the land and the people of which we are all a part. All of this, the work, the learning, the celebration, the memorial, the people, the stories, all of this is contained in every drop of honey. Golden, wonderful, and complex, honey is a reflection of the season and the surroundings of every hive, every flower visited, every bee's work. And yet every drop is so much more than honey. It takes a bee her whole life to make a teaspoon of honey. And each teaspoon can be a moment, savored and sweet, that can transform an idea, build a bridge, and offer inclusion. Every drop is a moment. Every drop is a ripple, an opportunity, a life. And so each jar carries the story of the bees, of the gardens, and the people, all interconnected. Every jar is a possible bridge between communities that might never have met, might have avoided each other, might have felt judged or shamed by each other. Instead, the honey offers a story of connection and pride and of our shared humanity. Each jar can change the narrative of what is possible, about what exists, about who we all are. We can save the bees, and we can save ourselves if we acknowledge the interconnection and truly honor and value it. In caring for the plants, the people, and the pollinators that make our communities, in caring for beings outside of ourselves, and having our care and our work recognized, we build self-worth, understanding of others, and hope for our future.
for those people whose life experiences have taught them that they are worthless, experiences of poverty, homelessness, and isolation. These opportunities to come into these spaces can be transformative. And for people who we might consider to have everything, a house that is safe, a bank account with savings, a family to fall back on, these transformative experiences are possible too. Connection saves lives, and bees, when they bring us into connection, save lives too. So here is the new story, the one that doesn't always get told about the communities we consider poor, and the one that doesn't always get told about bees. This story is collaborative. It was made by participants at each of our Hive Street Humanity workshops last year, each contributing one word. It was made by youth and elders, by people experiencing life in all kinds of different ways, all connecting through a shared fascination with the bees and a shared gratitude for the sweet wonders that they create. There is hope and joy and love. It is warm and awesome and golden. It is calm and cool and connected. These are the ripples that grow to waves. A flower blooms, a bee buzzes, a person breathes, a community shifts, a life is saved. By mirroring the connection and inclusion, the very culture of the hive, what ripples might you create? How might you save lives? Thank you.